Hello everyone, I'm here once again and in today's video, I would like to share the readings for this coming Sunday, April 14, 2023. To start with, let's have our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity that you gave us the time to listen to your words, so Lord. Please send us your Holy Spirit that we may understand the readings that we're going to take up. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So brothers and sisters, since we have already our opening prayer, let's proceed to the gospel reading a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread while they were still speaking about this jesus stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you but they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because the ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see i have and as he said this he showed them his hands and feet while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed he asked them have you anything here to eat they gave him a piece of baked fish he took it and ate it in front of them he said to them these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their then he, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from jerusalem you are witnesses of this things the gospel of the lord praise to you o lord jesus christ here my brothers and sisters this passage highlights the reality of the resurrection, the fulfillment of prophecy, the importance of understanding the scripture, the role of the disciples in spreading the gospel, and the power of the Holy Spirit. This teaching continues to be relevant and important for Christians today. Here, here's a brief highlight of each. First is... The fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus explains to his disciples that his death and resurrection were foretold in the scriptures. He quotes from the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms to show how his life and mission fulfilled these prophecies. Second, the importance of understanding scripture. Jesus emphasizes the importance of understanding scripture and it relates to his life and mission. He opens the disciples' minds to understand the scriptures, which helps them to recognize him as the promised Messiah. Third is the role of the disciples in spreading the gospel. Jesus commissioned his disciples to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in his name to all nations. He tells them that they are witnesses of these things and that they will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out this mission. Third is the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells his disciples that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. This power will enable them to be, with, to be his witnesses and to carry out his mission, the mission that he has given to them. And then last is the reality of resurrection. In this passage, Jesus 
appears to his disciples after his resurrection, demonstrating the reality of his victory over death. He shows them his wants and eats with them to prove that he is not a ghost or spirit, but a real resurrected person, and they were filled with incredulous for joy. The exclamation, incredulous for joy, effectively captures the disciples' response to Jesus, who they were uncertain about accepting. Their reaction denotes a hesitance to trust their senses and fully believe in what they were experiencing. The disciples were presented with a surreal sight. Jesus, who they had witnessed being crucified, was now standing, standing in front of them with visible wounds on his hands and feet. Despite his presence and interaction with them, the disciples were caught in a state of shock, disbelief, and uncertainty about what they were witnessing. Jesus even asked for food, adding to the astonishment of the disciples. The praise incredulous for joy suggests that the disciples were on the brink of experiencing overwhelming happiness, but their doubts or disbelief held them back. Despite their hesitation, they were eager to embrace the possibility that Jesus had indeed conquered death and had returned to them. The idea that their beloved leader was alive and present before them was almost too good to be true. And causing them to feel a mix of disbelief and joy. The disciples' reaction can serve as a reaction of our own experience when God invites us to draw closer to His glory and grace. Yan. So, we may find ourselves, he said, and just like the disciples, when God invites us to experience the joy of his resurrection. It can be challenging for us to fully embrace and accept the reality of the resurrection in our own lives, despite God's invitation to do so. There are various reasons why we may struggle to accept the resurrection and one of them is feeling discouraged. The disciples who were pr profoundly disheartened by Jesus' death serve as an example of this. Even when Jesus appeared before them after rising from the dead, they were, they were still hesitant to release the discouragement that had taken hold of them. Likewise, we can be prone to feeling weighed down by the burdens of the world, our own wrongdoing or the wrongdoing of others. This can lead to feelings of anger and frustration, causing us to dwell on the apparent problems we encounter. However, embracing the joy of resurrection entails redirecting our focus away from those concerns and instead centering our attention on the realities that God desire us to prioritize. Becoming disheartened by the various challenges that we encounter is unproductive. Rather, our Lord consistently urges us urges us to shift our focus towards something greater, especially His triumph, triumph from death. Ayan, so gazing upon his triumph, he's liberating and generate and generates a remarkable sense of faith within us. This faith in the resurrection Lord yields a remarkable joy that God desires us to experience. Today, brothers and sisters, take a moment to consider your own response to the truth of the resurrection of our Lord. Dedicate some time to contemplate the resurrected Lord, examining yourself, examining our self. I mean, examining His triumph and His splendor. Sorry. 
observe how he invites you to cultivate a profound faith in him all other factors that might lead you to despair will gradually vanish ayan so observe how in he invites you to cultivate a profound faith profound faith to him as our lord as the resurrection as a resurrected lord all other factors that might lead us to despair will gradually vanish nawawala yung lahat ng mga uh, mga kalungkutan or mga difficulties mga hindrances okay so brothers and sisters let us pray our lord we desire to behold you we yearn to witness your magnificence and majesty we aspire we aspire to witness your resurrection and take great joy and satisfaction in this truth please dear lord assist us in experiencing the incredible joy that comes from knowing you our lord and savior who has conquered death amen so brothers and sisters let's proceed to the first reading a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the Apostle, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death but god raised him from the dead on this we are witnesses now i know brothers that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did but god has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his christ would suffer Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here, my brothers and sisters, in the first reading, Peter announces that the God of Israel is also the God of Jesus, God's servant, child who live on earth in the closest possible union with God as the holy and righteous one and the author of life. Yeah, Jesus is the author of life. This cluster of notable this cluster of notable names for Jesus, tracing his faithful service, just character, and life-giving power, magnifies his reprehensible rejection and crucifixion and crucifixion by hostile <coughs> sorry, hostile forces. Can one imagine a starker constant and more heinous crime than killing the author of life? God cannot tolerate such a travesty of justice. And so, God responds not by punishing Jesus' killers. He doesn't punish those who kill Jesus, but by raising Jesus from the dead. And renewing God's ad adomitable commitment to life in Jesus' name. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, let's proceed to the second reading. A reading from the letter of from the first letter of Saint John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, I know Him, but do not keep His commandments, are liars. And the truth is not in them, but whoever keeps His word, the love of God is truly perfected in Him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And brothers and sisters, in the second 
reading. In contrast to the liars of verse 4 here in this reading are those who obey God's commandments. So if we obey God's commandments, we are not a liar. So we are seeing the truth that we know Jesus, that we love Jesus, that we know God, that we love God. So keeping God's word is another reference to obedience. According to John, God's love is perfected in those who obey the word of God. The term perfected does not refer to 100% flawless living, flawless living, but rather to maturity. No one is perfect as we can read in the, the as we can read in the uh, letter of St Paul to the Romans chapter 3 verse 10. But all believers are called to growth in to growth and maturity. This is a process of perfection. Amen. So I am brothers and sisters. God uh, invited us all to live in not not in a perfect like rest, flawless living, but we have to live in a maturity maturity life doing good following the, the following the commandments of god and then um, doing god's will and uh, whatever uh, god's uh, commandment we have to put into action amen so again thank you very much brothers brother and sister brothers and sisters for listening so let's have a closing prayer in the name of the father the son of the holy spirit amen lord thank you that you sent us your holy spirit na nagbigay po sa amin ng kaalaman na amin pong naintindihan ang mga salita mo po na aming pinag-aralan lord god um Ano ako po'y tulungan mo po kami, Panginoon, na amin itong may sabuhay at may bahagi sa aming kapwa. Amen. So, ayan, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you very much. And as I've said in every video that I have, God invited us all to go always in the church every Sunday as it is in His commandments. Make holy the day of Make holy the day of the Lord. Make holy the Sabbath day. So brothers and sisters, thank you very much and God bless us all.